What's up everyone, how's it going? This is Watch, and in this video I'm going to do a direct head-to-head -head laptop comparison between the all-new 12-inch MacBook versus the latest generation 13-inch MacBook Pro with a Retina display. So in this video we're going to specifically focus on the major differences between these two machines and really try to determine what the purpose is of the 12-inch MacBook and how it kind of fits in the MacBook lineup of Apple computers. So if you're uh, perhaps in the market for a new computer and you're contemplating whether to go with the MacBook Pro or the new 12 inches is a perfect video for you. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Now physically speaking, you can see that there is a pretty big size difference between these two. The MacBook Pro certainly has the larger overall form factor, as you can see side by side, than the 12 inch MacBook. And if you take a look at the thickness difference, you'll also see that there's uh, quite a big difference in terms of those parameters right there. Now move forward, let's talk about the ports and connectivity options we have on both computers. Now, certainly there's a massive difference between the two again. The MacBook Pro has a plethora of options meeting most people's connectivity needs. On the the other hand, the 12 inch MacBook is pretty much a blank canvas when it comes to those kind of options. We have a USB type C connection, a headphone jack and dual microphones. And you're pretty much dependent on that single USB type C connection for all your connectivity options. So you use it to charge up your computer. You use it as a data transferring interface. You can also use it as an external display interface for VGA display port and HDMI connectivity options. Obviously you're going to have to deal with a lot of different adapters for the time being so if somebody gives you a thumb drive you're going to need a USB type C to USB type A to make that thing useful and the reason why Apple went down this route in the first place is they thought most people are probably going to transfer data wirelessly and although many people do it's still an inconvenience for most people that don't have USB type C devices natively so hopefully in the future it'll be less of a problem but for now it's kind of a headache. Now in terms of webcam we have a 720p FaceTime camera on the MacBook Pro and a 480p FaceTime camera on the 12 inch MacBook. So even though the 12 inch has a lower resolution in terms of color rendition and low light performance, both cameras are fairly similar. Now, one of the main factors for the uh, thickness of the new 12 inch MacBook is because the keyboard is quite a bit thinner. It's actually 40% thinner than the previous generation MacBook Pro keyboard. Now, I personally like a keyboard that has a little bit of travel on it, uh, something that uh, gives you a little bit more feedback when you're typing on the individual keys. So I'm not the biggest fan of low profile keyboards but this is not bad it'll definitely take some time to get used to but I can certainly see why some people might want to go with the older generation keyboard because it has a more key travel and it gives you a little bit more feedback in that sense furthermore both computers have the new force touch trackpad so that's a non-mechanical trackpad that has a haptic feedback system that emulates your click feel and sound and uh, you can enable a third click function by using the force click feature on Mac OS 10 to do a whole bunch of different things. If you want more information, definitely check out my full review on the 2015 version of the MacBook Pro. Now let's move on to the displays on these two computers. Now they're actually quite similar, they're both using the Retina display. We have a native resolution of 2560 by 1600 on the MacBook Pro versus the 12 inch has a 2304 by 1440 native resolution. In terms of PPI count, very similar, uh, 226 on the 12 inch versus about 227. So pretty much identical in terms of uh, pixel density and uh, the nice thing about both of these displays is both LED backlit and are using IPS technology so they're great in terms of different viewing angles and the color rendition is almost identical as well. Now moving forward and taking a look at the internal specs on the baseline configuration on both computers. The 13 inch MacBook Pro comes with a dual core Core i5 chip that's clocking about 2.7 gigahertz and can turbo up to 3.1 gigahertz. It has 3 megabytes of level 3 cache and in terms of RAM we have 8 gigabytes of 1866 megahertz DDR3 and of course you can upgrade these parameters if you need a little bit more power and in terms of graphics we have Intel Iris HD 61000 series graphics. Now the new 12 inch MacBook is using a completely different architecture. We're using the dual core Intel Core M processor that's clocked about 1.1 gigahertz and it can turbo up to 2.4 gigahertz. You can upgrade this a CPU if you want and uh, in terms of RAM you do have 8 gigabytes so the same amount, uh, just clocked in a little bit slower at 1600 megahertz uh, GDR3. And in terms of graphics, 
we're also using a little bit lower performance graphics Intel HD uh, 5300 series graphics there. Now one thing I should mention is that we don't have any fans on the 12 inch MacBook. It's using passive technology to cool all the internals so it's pretty much silent in terms of its operation. Great for uh, some of you guys out there and uh, one of the reasons why the computer is so thin in the first place. But let's go ahead and actually take a look at the real world performance differences between these two computers and also take a look at the benchmark results so we can determine which is the faster overall laptop. Now what we're going to do first is take a look at our CPU performance between these two computers and to do that we're going to just use Geekbench 3 benchmark and we're just going to run through the benchmark on both computers and here are the results over here. Pretty big difference between the two as you can see over here pretty much the MacBook Pro is destroying the 12 inch MacBook both in terms of the single core and multi-core performance so if you do any kind of hardcore uh, CPU intensive applications even with the base model of the Pro you're looking at a nine day difference in terms of these scores over here and uh, to do another analysis we're going to use a Cinebench R15 benchmark and again as we fast forward to the results our uh, Pro is getting 319 points versus 207 points on the 12 inch so again we're witnessing a pretty big discrepancy when it comes to the CPU performance from the Pro to the 12 inch MacBook. Now that's all fine and dandy, but keep in mind that the 12 inch MacBook is really designed to be a web consumption device. So with that notion, let's actually take a look at the web browsing performance on these two computers. And to do that, we're going to use a piece of software called Peacekeeper, which is going to basically analyze our HTML5 performance, our JavaScript performance, just general web browsing capabilities on both machines. Both of our MacBooks are connected to the same Wi-Fi network and we're using the Safari web browser. And uh, let's go ahead ahead and fast forward to the results we're getting over 5,000 points on the MacBook Pro and uh, just around the uh, 4,000 point mark on uh, the 12 inch so uh, again when it comes to the web browsing capabilities the MacBook Pro is still going to be quite a bit faster when you're browsing the web especially if you view a lot of content rich websites and uh, watch a lot of online video and stuff and uh, have a lot of tabs open all the time so it's certainly the more serious web browsing machine although I do have to admit that based on my personal web browsing tests I really had no serious issues with the 12 inch I think for most people it's a very capable machine especially for most people's web browsing needs now moving on let's talk about the flash memory system we have on uh, both machines to test out the actual performance we're just going to use our uh, Blackmagic speed test and uh, see what our read and write performance is and as you can see from the results over here a uh, pretty big difference between the two I would think that they would be using very similar flash memory modules but that's not the case the MacBook Pro is quite a bit faster getting 1.3 gigabytes per second on average in terms of its write performance and uh, in terms of its uh, read performance over 630 megabytes per second which is uh, quite a bit faster than what we're experiencing on the 12 inch of it getting about 750 megabytes per second in terms of read speeds and about 450 megabytes per second in terms of its write speed so really if you're a person that has to deal with large file transfers from uh, different server units or external hard drives you're going to experience faster overall transfer times versus the 12 inches you're really using last generation flash memory technology which is kind of upsetting to see considering Apple is charging a pretty penny for the 12 inch. Now the last thing we're going to take a look at is the gaming and graphical performance on these two computers. We're going to use the Heaven benchmark. We're going to set the resolution to 1280 by 800 and uh, keep the details to a medium setting, no anti-aliasing. And uh, looking at the results over here, we're getting about 21.5 average frames per second on the Pro and about 12.7 average frames per second on uh, the 12 inch MacBooks. So again, when it comes to the gaming performance, you're going to definitely find smoother and more responsive uh, gaming experience on the Pro, especially if you pony up and upgrade to the higher end uh, GPU systems. You can even get the Core i7 or even a discrete GPU if you uh, go with the 15 inch model. But that being said, it's not like a gaming is not possible on the 12 inch. If you keep your resolutions to a moderate level, play less graphically intensive games such as Minecraft, you'll have a pretty playable experience. Yes. <laughs>
Now, last but not least, we're going to talk about the battery performance on these two computers. Now, in terms of capacity, we're looking at a pretty big difference between the two. We have a 74.9 watt hour lithium polymer battery on the Pro versus about 39.7 watt hour battery on the 12 inch MacBook. And based on my endurance battery life test, I got over 10 hours on average of just wireless web on the MacBook Pro versus around eight hours, 45 minutes on the 12 inch MacBook. So the uh, Pro is still better than the uh, 12 inch in terms of battery performance. It certainly has that larger battery, which definitely helps it out. And you definitely want to be careful of not taxing the CPU too much on the 12 inch MacBook because you will suffer in terms of battery performance, but it's still not bad at around nine hours in terms of its uh, wireless web browsing capabilities on one single charge. And over time, I'm sure I'll probably get even better battery performance with firmware updates and as the battery gets more and more broken in. And really to conclude, you can see that the MacBook Pro is uh, certainly going to retain its name. It's faster, more powerful than pretty much every other MacBook uh, notebook that you can get. And uh, certainly in terms of the internal performance and even battery performance, outperforms the 12-inch MacBook uh, by a huge margin. Now one thing you guys have to keep in mind is that the new 12-inch MacBook is really a brand new lineup of computers. It takes a lot of uh, research and development and certainly a lot of money to develop a uh, computer from the ground up and you're kind of paying for that research and development when you're getting the 12 inch so in most cases you that's why there's that high premium but this is going to be the new direction for Apple in terms of the design philosophy I'm sure the next generation of MacBook Pros are going to look very similar to this but just in a larger overall form factor and hopefully with a lot more ports and connectivity options but there's certainly a lot of promise for the 12 inch I'm sure eventually they might merge it with the MacBook Air we'll see what happens next but really in summary I would definitely recommend that you guys watch my MacBook Air versus the 12 inch MacBook. If you haven't already, it'll give you kind of a good understanding how the Air compares against the 12 inch and we'll have a full review up on the channel on the 12 inch as well. But thanks again for watching. But really other than that, that's really it. Take care.